much for joining us. I'll give this to you, and uh, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Dan. Uh, Finishing early, which is typically is a really good thing in election years, but uh, uh, this time, it's, you know, we had a full schedule already uh, in D.C., so uh, this is part of that. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, it was a pleasure to go to top, and I primarily went to top because uh, it was a reflection of my state. So we're, we're elected to serve and serve our districts. So let me just give you a little sample of Iowa. So Iowa has 50% of its energy from renewables. So whether it's wind, solar, ethanol, biodiesel, manure, hydro, um, and compressed renewable natural gas. We have just about everything. Uh, we did have nuclear uh, until five years ago, and it let its lifespan. However, it could have continued, and we're looking at trying to resurrect that again. Um, so we have all factors of renewables. At the time I went to the first COP in 2021, 50% of our electricity was from wind. Now it's over 60%. And Iowa is a net exporter of energy. So you think of us as the flyover state, we are an energy exporter, we're an energy state. Uh, we have more wind energy if we do per capita and per geographic area than in Texas, although Texas is number one, but Texas is almost three times the size of Iowa. Uh, so if we're just utilizing that wind, the same wind that gives us tornadoes actually gives us wind energy. So that's the state in which I live. Uh, and in order to support the state in which I live, in which I'm proud to serve, part of that is what we do on renewable energy. Um, you're correct. I was hoping to delay taking over the Conservative Climate Caucus until um, Representative John Curtis got elected to the Senate. Uh, he will probably be elected to the Senate now the primary is over. But because of the Senate race, he wanted us to take over a little earlier. So it's a little unusual to take over kind of midterm, but uh, we have taken it over. And we want to be able to grow the Conservative Climate Caucus. Um, I was recently asked, it was interesting, I was on a Chuck podcast. Uh, and he asked me um, about conservatives and Republicans uh, and energy and renewables and sustainability. And, you know, it's not a hard sell. Uh, and it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that, number one, Republicans, a lot of us are in rural states. We have very large districts. The two most disparate points in my district are almost six hours apart. We have a lot of rural areas. Uh, we have agriculture uh, is known in Iowa, uh, as well as I'm mean, making people know that we're an energy state as well. Uh, but because we're an agricultural state, farmers are the first and foremost conservationists. They want to protect the soil. Uh, they want to make sure that the soil lasts a long time. They don't want to see what happened in the Great Depression happen again to America's great farmland. Uh, so they're conservationists. They're stewards of the land. But they're also hunters. They're interested in habitat. So we have a lot of people working on habitat for pheasants, quail. They want water, clean water. So both nutrients uh, in the water and their nutrient production plant. And then also what flows downstream. We also need to have you know, lakes and rivers as navigation. So for navigation, very important in the agriculture community. So it would not be a surprise that we're interested in those things that, number one, improve our environment, protect our environment, and most importantly, as I like to say, we have a, clean, a cleaner, healthier planet for our children and grandchildren while we compete economically around the globe. What you're doing is helping us on that last phase, and that is we have to have affordable, abundant, reliable, secure energy, so that manufacturing here in the United States, our economy here in the United States can continue to foster, can grow, we can continue to export and compete economically with anybody else in the world. We're not gonna do it on labor costs, but we need to have affordable energy to be able to compete. So I'm gonna thank you for all you're doing. We know the United States through innovation, through its ability to pivot, its ability to um, improvise, we'll be able to solve our problems on getting affordable abundant energy while reducing emissions, and we will do that better than any place in the world. So thank you so much for all your